Today we're talking about entrepreneurs who are screwed without marketing intelligence. How many people do you know that have an idea or a product or a service and you know it could be a friend, a relative and they say, oh I got this great idea for a product uh, or this service and it's going to just change the world uh, or at least their world. And if you're a marketer like me, you start asking relevant questions. No, not to squash their dreams or their idea, but uh, to shed some reality light on to see if it's doable or not. So I start asking these questions like, who needs your product or who needs your service? You know, is the need big enough to sustain your lifestyle? Where are you going to get your products? You know, how are you going to reach these people? Is it going to be uh, word of mouth? Is it going to be internet marketing? Are you going to knock on doors? You know, one thing I do love, to be honest with you, is coming up with unique ideas um, on how to make money. And then I start laying it out uh, as a plan, and then I am start asking myself, you know, do I really want to do this the rest of my life? Uh, how long is this going to take? You know, how long is it going to take just to see profits? And do I want to stop doing the other ventures uh, that are, you know, making my bread and butter? Do I want to stop them? to focus on this new venture. So, you know, that's just an example. And timing is everything as well. Now, this is the best time to have like a a work at home course or a curriculum for people to follow along with. Um, And that's what I did for the Get A Clue Classroom. I started up uh, this membership site where I'm giving people um, new skills about marketing, starting a business and a step-by-step process Uh, for marketing intelligence, okay? So you definitely want to pay attention uh, to getting these marketing skills because without it, you're just going to fail and be a startup. In fact, coming up on our facts and stats segment, I'm going to show you the real numbers, (laughs) startups and entrepreneurs failing within the first year, okay? So stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, welcome back. In our facts and stats segment, I wanted to show you our startup failure rate. Uh, This is the Ultimate Report 2021 uh, by Failery.com. And uh, these guys got a great uh, infographic here. It says the failure rates of all new businesses at the end of the first year, 20%. Second year, 30. Fifth year, 50. 50%. So if there's 100 businesses, 50 of them are going to last past the fifth year. And then in the 10th year, 70%. Now that makes sense. If you're doing something for 10 years, you know, (laughs) and you're doing the same thing, there's definite burnout in that. It doesn't mean that person um, doesn't sell the business or, you know, dissolve the partnership or whatever. It just means that they're moving on to something different in uh, in that field. There's, uh, and startups have two characteristics, growth and innovation. Failure rate of all startups, 9 out of 10. Wow, that's amazing. This is why uh, you shouldn't listen to those people that say, quit your job and just go right into it, raise some money for capital, and you know, you'll be on your way. Well, uh, that's something that you want to definitely take a look at uh, these stats with. All right, lack of product market fit. This is all has to do with research, uh, legal problems. This is on the low end, legal problems, operation problems, financial problems. This is big. Financial problems, uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, cash flow. If you don't have enough cash flow, you don't have enough uh, money to invest in advertising or marketing. 22% is marketing problems. That's a big chunk you can see. So you got product fit, which there was no marketing research, not enough. Uh, That's a big chunk. And then the second one is marketing problems. And that's what I'm saying. These entrepreneurs uh, need to know how to market their product. I'm not saying that, you know, every marketing scheme is, is, um, you know, appropriate. But you definitely have to have it. You have to have that marketing intelligence. What is this unicorn thing? It says if startup fund has a portfolio of 100 companies, 10 successful startups, 
the 10 successful startups, including one unicorn, uh, should be more to compensate than the 90 failures. Okay. Oh, this is for investors. So the fail failure rate implications for startup investors. All right. So it's basically 10 out of 100. That's 10%. You have one unicorn that comes out which is just explosive, like TikTok. You know. Okay, business failure, rate by industry. This is uh, interesting. So if, you have a, um, if you're doing a hobby, you're doing a side hustle, um, these are the failure rates for the type of side hustle that you're doing now or that you may be getting into. So the information, which is interesting, is 63%, okay? Maybe that's because it's digital, it's information. Like if you're selling reports, eh, you can only do so many reports. I, I'm not sure what these, um, not what, all these categories. Now, uh, transportation utilities, 55%. Um, I can understand because in utilities, I was a contractor for... Uh, telecommunications and uh, we saw so many people change hands um, merge and when you're merging you're a contractor for a, a large <laughs> company and they go uh, they sell out they merge and they bring in their own people that's definitely a 55 uh, percentage there retail they can't keep up with the products demand bad reviews, construction, manufacturing. I don't need to go through all that, but uh, that's the failure rate by industry. So let's take a look at some others. Here's 39 entrepreneur statistics you need to know in 2021. This is over at the smallbusinessgenius.net. I'll leave the, uh, the bookmarks in the book market segment. I'll have all these uh, listed, okay? Fascinating entrepreneur stats. 90% of new American billionaires are self-made. Okay, that's like the top percent of the top percent. 2016, there were 25 million Americans who started or already running their own business. Okay, now that is some good news. If you can stay on top and you got a unique uh, niche, <laughs> I had to say that the right way, and um, and people coming to you for your products and services, it's it's fantastic if you could stay up. Forty six percent of small business owners are between forty one and fifty six. That's absolutely true. Most millionaires are over the age of fifty. Uh, there are five hundred and eighty two million entrepreneurs in the world. It's these five hundred and eighty two million entrepreneurs that are employing most of the world's um, workers, okay? 20% of businesses fail within the first year. Now, these are all going to have different stats for that, all right? Here's some more online stats for businesses. Six out of 10 small businesses don't have a website. Now, that alone is marketing 101. You got to have a website. And these people that say, oh, you don't need one, what they're, what they're saying there is, you can promote other people's products using your uh, your social feed or using your YouTube channel. And technically, those feeds are your website, your Facebook fan page, your business page, etc. Well, if you do that and you get kicked off the platform, then what are you going to do? You don't have your own website. 45% of these business people don't have a website. That's great opportunity for you. 55% of people make a purchase after searching online reviews and recommendations. Okay, 92% of the feedback given is considered positive. 47% share reviews on the seller's website, brand websites, 18%. Facebook, 31%. Here's a, another good one. Uh, almost 70% is the average car abandonment rate across industries okay so this is people that you know they buy a product well they don't even buy the product they go to the cart they add it to their cart and then they can either continue shopping or they do something else and they don't uh, follow through with the cart that's almost 70 percent right here that's good to know 
so that you can, um, you know, address that situation to get people to buy now. Consumers around 73% prefer doing business with brands that provide a personalized experience in shopping. So I'll give you an example. I just had this uh, massive issue with Microsoft, the store, Microsoft Store, I think it is. I got this gift certificate uh, from Christmas and then I was going to use it to buy an app that I needed uh, for uh, my videos. And it took me, you know, 10 minutes of going through this website that took me to another website. I didn't know whether or not it was downloaded or not. I didn't know. Uh, it didn't give me a receipt page that you spent, you know, X, X amount of dollars on this app. Um, I didn't get anything like that. It was the most horrific uh, shopping experience ever was the Microsoft Store, okay? And all I was doing was trying to buy an app that I can use on my computer for my video editing, and it took forever. And eventually I was charged the money. I got no customer service. There was no chat. That is the worst experience, okay? And that was Microsoft, so go figure. But I basically wanted to show you the, the failure rates and why people need to have marketing and intelligence because 22% of the reasons for a failure of a startup is marketing. The great thing about being a marketer today is that we're in demand. You know, people need this for their branding. They never went to school for marketing. They never... Uh, had to do marketing for their own business, and they're just starting out, so it's great for marketers. Okay, here's the tip of the week. Failure is the path of least persistence. Now, this has been a real-life issue for me, uh, especially over the last decade, that I didn't pursue uh, my goals, I didn't uh, see it follow through, and I just left money on the table. I basically lost you know, six to seven digits at least uh, over the last 10 years, just not being persistent, not being consistent. So the question is, are you going to lay out a plan, a marketing plan, especially for your business? Are you going to follow it? Um, is it the right plan for your business? Or are you just going to settle on doing what you're doing now? Okay, the choice is ours. You know, I have the same choice you do. Uh, you know, we, we can learn from our mistakes and, uh, you know, especially being an entrepreneur, I make a lot of mistakes, but that's how I learn. That's how I grow. OK, failure is not um, before success or I should say success is not before failure. You have to figure it out. You have to go through the mistakes. Anyway, this is David Deke from the Get a Clue Marketing Show. Check out my fun word puzzles and my word clouds on my blog to help submit the topic that we just learned today. Remember, marketing is creatively fun. And if you want to see more videos, click on the link below. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon.